welcome to Group B25's Introduction into Microwave Photonics. To understand microwave photonics, we must first have a general idea on what microwave signals are so that we can move on to things such as photonic structures and their applications and advantages and disadvantages. So what is a microwave? It's simply a form of electromagnetic radiation where these wavelengths can range as long as one meter to as short as one millimeter with frequencies anywhere between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Micro comes from the fact that these waves are generally smaller than those used in radio broadcasting, as you can see in this light comparison chart down here. So a quick review on, what a, on a wave. So if we're given a general expression such as this, A simply represents the maximum height of the wave, W represents the excitation of the wave, and theta represents the phase of the wave. So how do we generate these microwave signals? The most easiest understood method as far as complexity goes is through optical generation. A high frequency and frequency tunable microwave signal can be formed by beating two optical waves at a photo detector. Assume we have the following two waves, wave one and wave two. In general, we send these waves through two separate laser diodes, LDs, respectively. After this, they are sent simultaneously through an optical coupler. From there, they are sent into a photo detector to finally give us our microwave signal with an output IRF is equal to this equation right here. Now this equation shows that the excitation of the wave is the subtraction of two of the two original excitations where the phase angle is a su subtraction of the two original phase angles. And the, the amplitude uh, correlates to R which is a responsitivity of the photo detector. As we can see here, this is our one laser diode, this is our second laser diode. The waves are simultaneously sent through and hit the optical coupler, which is then sent to hit the photo detector to give us our final output. Now this technique is useful because it allows us to generate a signal up to the terahertz band, limited by only a bandwidth of the PD, the photo detector. However, this technique leads us to having a high phase noise since the phase terms of two waves aren't correlated and the beating process will transfer the phase noise of the two optical waves to the generated microwave signal. Numerous techniques have been proposed to reduce this noise. However, these techniques are fairly complex and require knowledge of active circuit components that at this point in our career students are very unfamiliar such as harmonic generators, loop filters, mixers, and modulators. Nonetheless, we can categorize these techniques into three general categories. Optical injecting, optical phase lock loop, microwave generation using external modulation. So now let's move on to what a microwave photonic signal is, and then we can examine things such as photonic structures, applications, and advantages and disadvantages. In this section, I would like to start off by talking about photonics. Merriam-Webster describes photonics as a branch of physics that deals with the properties and applications of photons as a medium for transmitting information. Photonics deals with creation, development, and detection of light within the visual radiation type of the electromagnetic spectrum. This region has wavelengths anywhere between 50 nanometers and 500 micrometers, and photon energies from 25 electron volts to 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 electron volts. The study of photonics can be broken up into the various subfields. The area in which we are most interested in is optoelectronics. Optoelectronics is the study of electronic devices that control and interact with light. This sometimes includes invisible forms like gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, and microwaves. These devices can be either electrical to optical or optical to electrical. Now we'll go back to microwave photonics. The study of microwave photonics can be broken down into two parts the analysis of optoelectronic devices processing signals at microwave frequencies and the use of optoelectronic devices in signal handling for microwave systems. The fundamental aspect of microwave photonics are its optoelectronic devices and photonic structures within them. I will be discussing photonic structures. Photonic structures are artificial structures 3D in form that manipulate the propagation of light. They are referred to as the semiconductors of light because like how semiconductors direct the flow of electrons, photonic structures do the same with photons of light. While discussing photonic structures, it is important to first understand photonic crystals. Photonic crystals are periodic dielectric structures that have a band gap that restricts the propagation of a certain frequency range of light. This property allows us to control light with ease and produce effects that are impossible with the conventional optics. 
Photonic crystals can be found in different dimensions. In one-dimensional crystals, layers of different dielectric constants may be deposited or adhered together to form a band gap in a single direction. These crystals are isotropic or anisotropic and can be used as an optical switch. In 2D, holes may be drilled in a substrate that is transparent to the wavelength of radiation that is expected to be blocked by a band gap. Usually square and triangular lattices of holes are used. In 3D, crystals may use multi-layers of crystals to meet an objective or certain behavior with the light photons. They use crystals in other dimensions. This image presents all three dimensions. The differentiating feature of these photonic crystals is the periodicity of dielectric material shown by the different colors. The first and most basic photonic structure was the yablonovite which is made by covering a slab of material with a mask containing, consisting of a triangular areas of holes. Each hole is drilled at an angle forming a network of intersecting holes of which photons can travel. Calculations of photonic structures depend heavily on Maxwell's equations which are solved by the application of massive, comp massive computational power. So based on the properties of the materials being used, the theoretical modeling of the device's optical behavior can be determined when designing these structures. There are various techniques that may have been developed that have been developed for the study of scattering, interference or diffractions caused by photonic micro and nano structures. There are certainly a wide range of applications where microwave photonic filters can be of interest. For instance, in the emerging broadband wireless access networks and standard spanning from universal mobile telecommunication systems to fixed access picocellular networks and including wireless local area networks, local multipoint distribution services, and many other applications such as but not limited to radio astronomy and radars. The objective of using a microwave photonic filter in the previous applications listed is to basically increase the capacity by reducing the coverage area. An enabling technology to obtain this objective is radio over fiber systems, where, ra where radio signals are distributed from a central location to remote antenna units using fiber optic transmissions as shown in the figure below. It makes it possible to centralize the radio frequency signal processing functions in one shared location called the heading. By doing so, radio antenna units are simplified significantly as they only need to perform optoelectric conversion and amplification functions. The processing at the shared location in the radio frequency signal processing functions involves a prior frequency down conversion, ADC, and baseband processing using a DSP, digital signal process. The down conversion operation is simplified or can even be eliminated by adding a microwave photonic filter prior to the optical detection step in the system. By adding this filter, we are able to simplify the whole ADC and DSP operations by putting less requirements and boundary conditions on the system. The microwave photonic filter can also be used for channel rejection or channel selection applications. For example, in radio astronomy applications where the radio antenna picks desired signals as well as interfering signals, here the signal transmission from several stations to a central site requires removing strong man-made interfering signals from these astronomy bands. The ability to reject these interfering radio frequency signals directly in the optical domain is a unique characteristic of these photonic filters. Another application example is for noise suppression and heavy noise interference in the receiving antenna of a telecommunication system such as Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, Hyperlan, LMDS, and other types of networks. Here, a bandpass photonic filter can be employed to select a given RF band or spectral region. In both cases, the position of the rejection filter bandpass can be as low as a few megahertz or as high as several tens of gigahertz due to the broadband characteristics of photonic delay lines. Microwave photonic filters can also be of interest in applications where lightweight is a prime concern. For example, a microwave photonic filter can be used here as an analog notch filter in order to minimize interference received from other frequency channels in digital satellite communication systems. Another important application of microwave photonic filters is in the field of true time delay beam steering of antenna arrays. A photonic true time delay system for feeding an array of antennas is based on the use of broadband photonic delay lines. The feeder network for an array of N antennas is essentially equivalent 
to an NTAP microwave photonic tunable finite impulse response filter where the basic filter delay T can be altered. The only difference being that each filter sample is detected by a different optical receiver that is placed before each antenna unit in the array. The figure below shows an example of a photonic beam steering system that is based on using a dispersive delay line implemented by a linearly chirped fiber Bragg rating, featuring a dispersion parameter of d picoseconds per nanometer in combination with a bank of n-tunable laser sources. The wavelength distance delta lambda between adjacent sources is kept constant. The RF signal to be radiated modulates the whole set of optical sources, and each wavelength is selectively delayed by the linearly chirped fiber Bragg rating and then directed to a particular optical receiver feeding an element of the array after being demultiplexed. The phase difference for an RF signal of frequency ohm between adjacent element is given by the formula we have on the screen. So that shows that it can easily be changed by changing the delta lambda. To finalize this list of potential applications, it should not be forgotten that the very high bandwidth and potentially low delays, such as 5 seconds per meter, that can be achieved with optical delay lines make them an ideal technology option for the implementation of signal correlators for very high speed signals and incoherent optical code division multiplexing applications. In this section, we will be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of microwave photonics. The future of information requires data transfer at the gigabytes per second range. Such speeds can be achieved by modulating digital data over a microwave carrier at the millimeter wavelength band, such as the license-free 60 gigahertz band. The extremely low loss bandwidth of state-of-the-art optical fibers used in microwave photonics enable distribution of 60 gigahertz signals with a high frequency between PICO or femtocells. Furthermore, the extremely low power consumption of an access network comprised of PICO or femtocells would make it a much greener alternative than the current macrocell networks, which require high power base stations. Using microwave photonics allows the use of optical cables as opposed to the traditional coaxial cables. Optical cables are lighter in weight than coaxial cables, weighing in at 1.7 kilograms per kilometer as opposed to coaxials at 567 kilograms per kilometer. The signal loss in optical cables are also frequency independent and there is no electromagnetic interference due to the fact that there's no electricity flowing through them. They are also smaller in diameter and they are made with silicone as opposed to expensive materials such as copper. The raw materials for making optical fibers Silicone is abundant and cheap, yet they are still more expensive per meter than coaxial cables. They are also more fragile than electrical wires, and glass can be affected by chemicals including hydrogen gas. Radiation exposure can lead to opaqueness, thus diminishing their effectiveness in military applications, and they cannot be joined together as easily as, co as copper cable and require additional training and expensive splicing and measurement equipment. And now to summarize, microwaves are a form of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths ranging from 1 millimeter to 1 meter and frequencies ranging from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Generating the microwave signal begins by two laser diodes simultaneously sending an optical wave through the optical coupler. It is then sent through the photodetector yielding the final wave. Photonics is the study of electromagnetic waves within the visible spectrum and deals with the creation, development, and detection of these waves. Optoelectronics are electronic devices that control and interact with light as well as invisible waves such as gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, and infrared. Microwave photonics is broken into signal processing and signal handling using optoelectronics and photonic structures. Photonic structures are structures with a band gap used to manipulate the propagation of light. A major branch of photonic structures are photonic crystals. These are periodic dielectric structures that forbid the propagation of a certain frequency of light. 
Photonic crystals come in three dimensions, 1D, 2D, and 3D. 1D is periodic in one direction, 2D in two directions, and 3D in three directions, as evident by the figure on the screen. An example of a simple photonic structure is the Jablonovite, and an important key in the production of photonic structures is that it must be produced at the micron scale in order to produce a band gap at optical wavelengths. One example of the applications of microwave photonic filters is the radio over fiber systems, which is used to increase capacity by reducing coverage area. Another application is in radio astronomy for channel rejection or channel selection. They are also in telecommunication systems where bandpass photonic filters can be used for noise suppression and analog notch filters can be used to minimize interference for other communication channels. Optical cables are used in the transmission of microwave photonics. Some of their advantages when compared to coaxial cables include being lightweight with no interference from electromagnetic waves and they are smaller, while their disadvantages include being expensive, fragile, and require requiring high maintenance. For our proposal, we would like to create a simple photonic structure and model the propagation of an electromagnetic wave through it in the software OpenEM. Thank you.